present is present spasmodically in our life. There are different aspects to the presence of God. There is God's omnipresence. I mean, David said in Psalm 139, if I take the wings of the morning and I go, you know, I go up into the heavens, there you are. If I make my bed in hell, there you are. If I fly to the uttermost parts of the sea, there your spirit is. You can't get away from God. Amen. God is, is everywhere. God is in the highest mountain and he's in the most smallest, minute, little grain of sand. God is in all. Man has, has voided himself of God, but God has not voided himself of his own creation. There's, there's nothing outside of creation apart from God. God is the one that contains creation. Creation does not contain God. God contains creation. It is all in Him. It's all wrapped up in Him. There's nowhere you can go where God is not. Uh, go to the deepest, darkest pit uh, in this world of, of sin and despair. You still won't get away from God. Because there's nowhere where He is not. His presence is everywhere. If it were not true, then He would not be God. Uh, but He is God. He is ever-present. So, uh, it doesn't matter where you go, what you do, uh, God is going to be there. So that's His omnipresence. Everyone in this world lives in God's omnipresence. Okay. You're not aware of it, but it's there. Amen. At the end of the age, when the fullness of time, times, has come, the Word of God says that He's going to gather all things together into one, and God will be all in all. Mm -hmm. It will be back to the beginning again. At the end, God, in the beginning, everything was God. At the end, all shall be recognized again as God. So there's that aspect of His presence. Mm -hmm. Then there is uh, the aspect of God's indwelling presence. Uh, the Lord said to uh, the prophet Ezekiel, He said, I will come and I will put my spirit in you. Uh, it, it, Paul said to the Corinthians, you know, we are the temple of the living God. His spirit lives in us. He said, I will walk in them and I will talk in them. They shall be my God and, and they, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Yes. Uh, there is an indwelling presence. And if you are saved here tonight, you have his indwelling presence. Yes. Amen. That's all it takes is salvation. Uh, then later on when you go further and you're born of the water and the spirit, uh, that is rebirth. Conception is salvation. The blood. But the water and the spirit is rebirth. Where you are brought into birth in the spirit. And you, have, uh, uh, you grow in that capacity of the indwelling presence of God. But you can have the indwelling presence... Um, and still not live in His presence. Come on, yeah. Hello? Come on. Our aim and our goal with where we're going in these studies these last months, we are, we are reaching a, a, a place, a vision of living in the presence of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not void of the presence. We live in a religious society that is void of the presence of God. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Most churches are void of the presence of God. Yes, His omnipresence is there, the indwelling presence is there, and even His manifest presence. His manifest presence when Jesus went to Cana, and He performed the miracle of changing the water into wine. The Bible says that uh, He manifested His glory. That's God's manifest presence. His manifest presence can come upon you in a service, in a prayer meeting, when you're driving down the road, when you're reading your Bible, and you, you feel the power of God, and you feel the goosebumps, and, and He's working in you, and you get a revelation, and something happens. Yeah. This is His manifest presence. Yeah. It's miraculous presence. Yeah. Things happen in God's manifest presence. So we've got the omnipresence, we've got the indwelling presence, we've got the manifest presence. But what I am trying to talk about is God's dwelling presence. Yes. This Shokhan, or Shekinah, His Shekinah presence, where He comes and dwells, uh, not as a visitor, where we treat Him like He's coming to a hotel, to rest for a little while, or, or He's coming to fix something in our house, 
This is how we treat God. Well, something's wrong in my house. I need it fixed. Come fix it. Uh, you know, we pick up the Holy Ghost phone, as it were, and we make a prayer request to the heavens. And Jesus, I'm sick. I need healing. Come heal me. And then we cry out to God. Or I'm desperate. I need something. Come fix it. You know, this is how we treat yes. the Lord. Yes. Yeah. But I'm not talking about that kind of presence. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about God's dwelling, remaining, yes. abiding mm -hmm. presence. Yes. This is what God's purpose with creation has been from the word go. Mm -hmm. It was to dwell. Mm -hmm. I want to dwell among them, God said. He told them, told Moses in the book of Exodus, he said, build me a tabernacle so that I can dwell among my people. He said, if you check this later on, I decide to dwell among Israel. He said the same thing in the book of Ezekiel. I want to dwell with my people. In the book of Revelation we see, and he who sits on the throne shall dwell among them. This has always been God's purpose. The creation was for, from the very was for the very purpose of God dwelling among His people, making Himself known to them, coming and and being uh, uh, allowing creation to be the house mm. to house Him. And the very first place that we know about, read about, and see in the Word of God of God's dwelling presence was the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. That was the very first dwelling place of the presence of God among men. Mm. This presence of God in Eden and what God wanted Eden to become. Mm. Mm. Wow. What was the whole purpose of Eden? Was it just to box up a little place somewhere on the planet? You have to understand, there was a whole creation out there. Mm. Wow. Not all creation was in Eden. Oh, wow. There were fish and birds and cattle and, and plants and trees and food and there was all sorts of things out there. What did God want to do with His presence through Adam, male and female? Wow. Powerful. Yes. Whatever God wanted to do with them, He wants to do with us. And since the first Adam failed, the second Adam has not failed. Hallelujah. I want you to turn with me to John chapter 1. Bless the Lord. Amen. I long for this. Yes. I crave it every day of my life. This shikam, this dwelling, remaining presence of God. It's so sad, you know, homes are void of God's presence. Marriages are void of God's presence. Yes. People's personal lives are void of God's dwelling, remaining presence. Churches are void of His presence. Committee meetings, board meetings, and all kind of meetings are void of the presence of God. People these days in the religious world are not concerned about bringing back the presence to the people. There was only one in uh, the Old Testament days who was concerned about bringing back the presence of God to the people and that was King David. Mm -hmm. Nobody, as great as Samuel was, wow. as great as a judge, he was considered the greatest judge of Israel. The most beloved, the most, uh, the one that, the favorite that Israel still speaks about today as being the most favorite judge of Israel. Mm -hmm. Even he did not give the people the vision or the desire or the cry or the, or the scream to bring back the ark of God and the abiding presence of God uh, to the people of God. Until David came along and he said, okay, I am not going to be king. I'm not going to build myself a palace. And, and God's presence is nowhere near. He said, God, I've got a home. I built myself a palace, but I will not rest until I find a resting yeah. Somebody shout. Yeah. Oh, until I find a resting place for your presence uh, among the people of God. Well, when you have presence, His presence, there's life. Yes. 
There's anything can happen in the presence of God. There's fullness of joy. There's unity. There, there's peace. The peace of God that passes all understanding. You can't figure it out. Yeah. You may be going through the hell of the damned. Mm -hmm. But in the presence of God there's a peace that you can't figure out. Yes. I don't know why I feel so good. And why I feel so peaceful. I'm going through hell. Mm -hmm. But yet there's a calm. There's a peace. Because there is a presence. Mm -hmm. Thank you Jesus. Thank you. Okay. I'm in John. I'm in chapter 1. So this is what we're talking about tonight. This dwelling abiding, Jesus. remaining presence. Ooh. In John 1, chapter 30, uh, <laughs> no, we're in chapter 1, <laughs> verse 32 and 33. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode Hello? Amen. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. abode. abode. That word abode means continued. Woo. Wow. It means it remained. Wow. It means it dwelt permanently. Whoa. It means wow. it endured. It means it was always present. It means it stood and it means he was in his own. Wow. Glory be to God. Oh, yeah. John saw the Spirit coming down from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, that's the Father, the same said to me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Yes. He said, it's not just the one the Spirit descends upon. It's the one the Spirit descends upon and remains Woo! upon. And this is where we goof. Yeah. This is where we fail. Yeah. He descends upon us and, and we feel it and, oh, and we're overwhelmed oh. by it. Oh man, I never want to leave this place! That's good. Mm. That's good. But something happens. Yeah. Let's say that this towel is the dove. Okay? Mm -hmm. And John said, I saw the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Mm -hmm. So the dove comes and descends upon him. <coughs> but it remained. Oh. It didn't fly away. Now doves are very sensitive creatures. Mm -hmm. Doves will fly away at the smallest agitation. Mm. Mm. You know what our problem is? We walk through life not considering the dove. Mm. We walk through life without a consideration of the presence. Yes. This is what we do. Jesus never lost this presence. He never lost that spirit because every move he made he was considering the dove. Oh, yeah. Every second, I wish somebody would. I feel a part of it. Praise God. When he's walking down the stairs, he's considering the dove. When he's walking up the mountain, he's considering the dove. When he's speaking the word, He's considering the dove. Blessed be the Lord. When he's healing the sick, he's considering the dove. When he lays down to rest at night, he's considering the dove. When he rises up in the morning, he's considering the dove. He's considering the dove. The only time we consider the dove is when he comes and rests on the shoulder. And we feel the tingle and the, you know, it's like, whoo, man, I feel touch and I feel excited. My body just got healed and I just got, you know, blessed with this or an answer to pray to that or whatever. And then we start walking around and, and we jolt ourselves in the world and in the flesh and in our thoughts. And, and the dove goes, wow. Wow. And we wonder, why didn't that remain? Why did it 
fly away? Why do I live in such a yo-yo relationship with the presence of God? Isn't that powerful? Yes. yes. <laughs> Woo! Shut up! Yes. There's no consider. Well, we don't consider. We consider our own feelings. We consider our own hurts. We consider our own wish, our own will, our own desires. We consider pleasing people. We consider pleasing our flesh. We consider our own pride. There's a lot of things we consider. And all those things mentioned above, they all jolt this dove and he flies away. Because he will not uh, rest himself where there is no tranquility. Where, where there is no rest. Where there is no trust. Where there is no peace. He just flies away. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. But that not so with Jesus. John saw the Spirit, the presence, come down upon him. He, he already had omnipresence. He already had, he was already filled with the Spirit. He had that without measure. Oh, wait till we get to talk about that. Mm. Mm. He had that without measure. Praise God. But something happened that day. There was a presence of the Almighty God, of the Spirit of God, that came upon him without. And this Spirit, blessed be the name of Jesus, could be seen and felt. And when, when, when you live under this uh, Spirit of God, this dove spirit or this dove anointing, this this. Uh, eagle presence or whatever it is however God chooses to manifest it in your life people are going to know when you walk in a room mm -hmm. people are going to sense not you but him yeah. people are going to be aware of something that is bigger and greater than yourself mm -hmm. wow. you are going to leave an impact an impression, not because you have a Bible in your hand and you're bashing people on the head with it, but because there is a presence with you. Yes. Everywhere Jesus went, there was a presence. Mm. What do you suppose it was mm. that got the disciples who, they had a profession, look at Peter for example. He was a, he was a, a jolly good fisherman. And he was out there fishing and, and mending his nets. And here comes the stranger walking past him and said, Peter, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. And Peter didn't go, what? <laughs> Excuse me now, who, who are you be? <laughs> uh, wait a minute, well, if I'm going to leave my nets and my profession, do, do you have any health insurance for me? <laughs> or, or do you have some papers that we need to sign an agreement that, you know, you take care of me and I've got a family to take care of? Mm, right. Uh-uh. Not what happened. When Jesus walked by and that power mm. and that presence was mm. upon him and he says, Peter, come follow me. Wow. I'll make you fishes of men. Peter just melted. Mm, yeah. mm. Wow. Dropped it all. Mm. And started following along. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, where I'm going, but something's right. <laughs> Something is right. And he, he felt that. They all felt that. They all had a similar experience. Praise the Lord. When Jesus called them. There was no persuading. There was no pushing, you know, twisting people's arms. There was no kick and push and shove. Why is it? In the church world today, you've got to force people to do anything right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, well, you've got to do this. And, uh, uh, and it, it, it's just the way the church world has become. And because people don't like to be pushed and forced, neither should we push or force, Amen. then the whole world just goes to smithereens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Why? Because God's people are not protecting that presence. Hey. Wow. They are not standing. They're not standing for that presence. They are not inviting yes. that presence. They are not paying the price. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Like I say, we're getting, we're building up to that. The price to pay yes. to have the abiding presence of God in your life. Thank you, Lord. 
God's word never tells us anywhere to go seek his hand. It says, seek his face. And that word face is the Hebrew word panim. And panim means presence. When you seek his face, you are seeking his presence. Panim means person. Panim means reason and purpose. And panim means bread, show bread, to show. And I never understood all these years. Listen to me. Get ready to tell you something exciting. For, for years, I, I wanted to understand why. Why in the tabernacle of Moses, there was a table with bread on it called the bread of faces. Wow. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Why? Wow. Why was it the bread of faces? Oh, wow. I couldn't figure that out. Yes, I've heard and I've read the explanations from various ones mm. of what the bread of faces means. Mm -hmm. But nothing ever satisfied my soul. Mm. There was something like the bread, the bread of faces. Mm. It's the word uh, ponin, lehem. Ponin being uh, the presence, the face, the, the purpose, the reason, and Lehem being bread. So presence, bread, mm. the bread of his presence, the bread of his face. Mm. Why? The bread of his reason, the bread of his purpose, mm. wow. the bread of his presence. And so it wasn't until about two weeks ago I'm just looking at this, I'm like, there I am back again at this showbread stuff. And, and I have never figured it out, and I wanted in myself to kind of just bypass it, because <laughs> I, I wanted to understand it for so many years and never got an idea. But then, boom, I got it. Wow. You want to know what it is? Yes. Yes. Why did King David say in Psalm 23, verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Mm. What is that table? What is on that table? Listen to me. We've got a candlestick over here on one side in the type of the shadow. Candlestick is light. Mm. It is uh, illumination. Mm -hmm. It is understanding. It is theory. Right. The table over here is bread. It is life. It is experience. Mm -hmm. You've got theory. And you've got experience. Yeah. And this theory is never yours without an experience. This bread on this table is not experienced unless it is broken and eaten. Mm -hmm. Now listen to me. About a thousand times today, my Lord has been in your presence breaking his bread. Wow. Many, many times today, while you were driving down the road, taking a shower, stubbed your toe in your kitchen, got up on the wrong side of the bed, something happened, someone looked at you the wrong way, somebody gave you the, a bad look, somebody did this, somebody pulled in on you in the traffic, or whatever it might be. There's a thousand things that happened to all of us today. I can mention a few of my own. In the midst of that, hmm. In the midst of these enemies, wow. praise God, the Lord is there with His presence, bread. Wow. Ooh, Breaking the presence, bread. Here, I'm looking at you. My face is looking at you. What are you going to do with this bread? My presence is My purpose is here. My reason is here. What are you going to do? with this bread. Mm. How many times a day do we re reject the bread of His presence? Mm. His presence comes in the most unlikely forms mm. in the midst of our enemies. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Enemies of our soul, persecution, mm. talk, stabbing, jabbing, things going on, whatever happens in our life. Right in the midst of these enemies surrounding that table, God is breaking the bread of His face. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Looking at you. Wow. Watching upon you. His presence is there being broken to you. 
Wow. Now what we do with that presence is another matter. Yes. If we do not create a habitation, if we don't create a Zion, if we don't create a tabernacle of David right there on that yes. spot, praise God and say, Lord, this is my Zion. This is where you have put yes. your headship. Wow. This is where you have put your glory right now. Yes. This is where yes. you put your, your bread and broken it for me in my life. I will make you a habitation. Yes. God dwells in the praises of Israel. Yes. Hallelujah. He remains. Yes. We walk away from the experience and we lose the presence. We lose the face. Let his face shine upon you. His presence, his pony. But no, we walk right away from that. I don't want that bread. That bread is stale. Wow. That bread stinks. Mm -hmm. That bread is painful. That bread's too small. Mm -hmm. That bread doesn't make sense. But whatever it may be, whatever excuse we have, we walk away from the bread of his presence. And we miss the opportunity a thousand times a day to gain more of the presence of God in our lives by lengthening the cords and strengthening the stakes of our, of our uh, abiding temple or tabernacle that we have formed in our hearts and wills. Luke 24, verse 33. And 31, you, you remember this great story of when Jesus was walking, uh, on the, uh, the disciples were walking on the way to Emmaus, and they were downcast, and you know, you, you all know that story. Jesus appeared to them, the resurrected Christ, whom they did not recognize. They had never experienced the resurrected Christ. Mm. They didn't know the bread in that form. Wow. <laughs> That's oh, that's so interesting. Yes. They had never experienced the bread in that form. This was new for them. Mm. But there they were walking right with him. But they, have, they were totally unaware wow. of who he was and who this was that was talking to them. Even <laughs> though they did say later on, we, we burned. Yeah. Mm. Our hearts burned within us. We could feel something. There was a presence. Mm. There was something there. Mm -hmm. But this is what happened in Luke 24, verse 30 and 31, when Jesus uh, appeared to them. And it says, It came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, <laughs> lamb, mm -hmm. and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, and their eyes... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm were opened. Wow. They got a revelation. Yeah. And they knew Him. Mm -hmm. And He vanished from their sight. Mm -hmm. God comes a million times a day. Of course, that's, a, that's an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. Breaking the bread. Mm -hmm. You're walking along with, I don't understand. I don't understand where I am. I don't understand what's going on. Boy, if I've said that a million times in the last few months. I don't get it. I, I, I can't figure this out. And they, why do they do this? And why did they say that? And what's going on here? And who are they anyway? And, you know, you know, always, and here he's walking with you, the bread. Mm. Walking with you. And we come to this point where he breaks the bread in the midst of the situation because in this, I want to give you my presence. Mm. Wow. How often has yeah, that happened Lord. when we look at that and say, that's not the answer I wanted. Yeah. That's not the bread I wanted to feast on. And we reject the very thing that has come to give you life. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Wow. Is that making sense yeah. to you? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. See, David, he was, the, the more I studied David, the more I understand why God loved that man so much. Mm. He loved him so much that his own son, the son of God, was called the son of David. Wow. 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 That's how much God loved mm. that man. Mm. He called him the son of David. Mm. He came through the lineage of David. 
He will sit on the throne of mm. David. It doesn't even say the throne of Jesus. <laughs> wow. It's the throne of Shadahaya. It is the throne of David. And while we continue on with these lessons and we study this man and his heartbeat for God, the sinful creature that he was, but yet the longing and the craving wow. that he had for God's presence. Oh, praise God. What well, this one thing I have desired yeah. and that will I seek after yeah. that I may dwell yeah. in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Yes. That I may dwell, remain in his presence. Hallelujah. This was David's heartbeat. As the deer pants for, panteth for the water brook, so panteth my soul yes. mm. after thee, O Lord my God. Yes. I long to fellowship with people with that kind of panting. Yes. Mm. I long to fellowship with those kind of people with that yes. kind of heartbeat yes. for yes. God. Yes. Well, I don't care what's going on out there. I don't care if we meet under a bridge. I don't care if it's raining. I don't care as long as our heart is unified yes. and longing for God, yes. longing for His presence, yes. longing yes. for Him to come down yes. and dwell amongst His people. Yes. Hallelujah. That's my longing. I don't have another one. I don't want a church. I don't want a building. I don't even want people. I want Jesus. Yes. Yes. I want His presence. Yes. And if my life can be saturated with His presence, where that presence can touch and influence somebody else, so be it. But that's not my heartbeat. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes. I want Him. Yes. I crave Him yes. every day of my life. Mm. I long yes. for that remaining dwelling presence of the Almighty God. Yes. Hallelujah. David loved it so well. Let's go have a look at it. Mm. Go to First Chronicles chapter 16. Thank you, Jesus. I'm in uh, 1 Chronicles 16 and verse 37. This is after David had set up the tent on Mount Zion, the tabernacle, and he had brought the ark back from Abinadab's house, passing through Old Ben Edom's house, where it remained for three months. And then they took it up to Jerusalem, and they put it into the tabernacle of David. And there it says in verse 10, after all this celebration, hoopla, and Glory going on and dancing and shouting and worshiping and praising God and music and trumpets. And I mean, boom, man, you talk about a powerful day. Mm. You, you talk about a day of noise. Yeah. Unbelievable. I don't ever want to be around a crowd of people who doesn't want noise. Yes. Yes. Noise is powerful. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Yeah, I like the silence too. This is where we, you have to learn balance. In the kingdom of God. In all things, there's always two sides. Yes. Remember that. Yes. 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 In all truth, there is two sides. Yes. Yes. Okay? First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 37. David, he left there before the Ark of the Covenant. It's now in the tent on Zion. Uh, the covenant of the Lord Asaph. In other words, he put Asaph in charge. He was the priest in charge of making sure that that place was kept in order. Mm. Hallelujah. Uh, Asaph and his brethren to minister before the ark from 8 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. No. One day a week. No. <laughs> Has anybody got a different translation? Yeah. Yeah. Continually. Say it. Continually. Can I hear everybody say that word? Continually. Oh, really? Continually? He put these people before the ark of God to minister to the abiding, the, that Shokan, mm. Shekinah presence of God on Zion continually. It was a 24-7 union. Wow. It was a 24-7 covenant Praise God with the ark of God. It was a 24-7 praise, love feast, worship feast, adoration feast, 
reverence feast. Mm -hmm. You say, well, we can't be in church 24 hours a day. Uh, that's not possible. I'm not talking about that kind of worship. I'm not talking about going to church and having a worship session. People come out of church and say, well, how is the worship today? Why don't you rather ask, how is your life today? Because our lives are the worship. How we live our life is the worship unto God. How we walk, what we do, what we say, how we act, how we react. These things are worship. Then when we come together as all the bricks and stones of the building as a united temple and we have worship before the Lord it is explosive yes. Yes. why because everybody's living the worship yes. Yes. Shine higher. everybody's already there you don't have to push and shove and crank I remember when I was a little kid about three four years old my, my dad had an old Ford and it didn't have a key it had a crank anybody remember those cars do you remember? You didn't the remember them? The yeah, they said, you, you put this. I, I saw one as a piece of junk one time. <laughs> no, it wasn't junk. It was an awesome car. Yeah. Start that. Time. But it's a crank. It kind of looks like that, you know. Yes. It, and then you you shove it in the front, and then you crank it like this to start the engine. That was the key. You got to have a crank. <laughs> this is how God's people are. Yeah. You got to crank them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and you finally get it up and you've warmed it up enough and, <laughs> and it's still cranky. <laughs> <laughs> because it never wanted to be cranked in the first place. Yeah. This is how the church has become. Yeah. Yeah. Leave me alone. Yeah. I'll do it when I'm ready. Yeah. Mm. Come on. I'll do it when I want. Yeah. Praise God. I, I didn't come here today for that. I've got a different need. Mm -hmm. As if your need is so important. Mm -hmm. What about God's need? Mm -hmm. God made everything for Himself. Yes. Mm -hmm. He made us to worship. We are created to be worshipers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our existence is to be a worshiper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll study that too. Praise God. Living the life of worship. So David put these people in their place according to their course or their various companies, so many at a time, 4,000 instruments, 4,000 doorkeepers, 288 singers, uh, 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 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, for almost 40 years, that ark was never void of worship. Mm. Wow. Incredible. And in those 40 years, were the most prosperous mm. years wow. of the history of Israel. Wow. wow. In those 40 years, when the ark of God was in Zion, and it was being worshipped, and His presence wasn't present with the people of God, was the most prosperous period in their history. They didn't lose battles. They won most of them anyway, unless David fell up. Praise God. But there was so much prosperity in Israel at the end of David's reign that David gave everything that was needed to build the Temple of Solomon. And on today's market, in the value of today, guess how much that temple would have cost? $144 billion. Wow. And David gave that. Wow. This is how prosperous this man was. Wow. But did you see anywhere where he sought prosperity? No. No, no he sought God. Yeah. No! You see anywhere where he sought the hand of God? The power of God? No. He sought the face of God. He sought the bread. He sought that presence. He sought that purpose. I reread it over and over again. 144 billion? 144 billion dollars. He offered up to erect the Temple of Solomon. Which David's, all David's covenant and order was put into that temple. The worship 
continued. It wasn't like the tabernacle of Moses. People say it was. It was not. Read your Bible. Amen. The order of King David concerning worship spilled over mm. into the, in Solomon's temple. There was music, dancing, tambourine, psalteries, harps, feasts. All that went on in the temple that never went on in the tabernacle. Mm. Praise the Lord. It was a different day. A different season. God leads us through our seasons. Yes, yes, and that season began with God giving, bringing them out of Egypt and giving them this tabernacle picture of their son where they learned to yield, to obey, to grow. There was a growing period where you go up and down and to and fro through, through all the beautiful fulfillments of Christ in your life. And it's not that you ever stop that. It doesn't cease. But we have come to a new place. We've come to a new era. Why should we think that's strange? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's strange. I welcome it. Yes. I was stagnant and dead where I was mm -hmm. in my own walk with God. I knew there had to be more. I'm like, God, is this it? Yeah. You know, have, have I really come to Zion? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, no, this cannot be it. The it was when his presence came and abode and dwelled amongst his people. And the, the nation was surrounded in, in unified adoration to the presence of God. Wow. That's what united them. It's powerful. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord forevermore. Yes. Amen. Woo! Go to John. Run back over there. Chapter 14. So he prepares a table in the presence of our enemies. Thank you, Jesus. So it just let me know all over again. This is not something just to teach. This is something to experience. Yeah. In the midst of wherever we are and whatever we're going through, Whatever enemies may be surrounding, yes. there, there is the bread of faces there. Yeah. There is the bread of the presence of God. Yes. What am I going to do with it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I can either make a habitation for that presence and have it abide with me through the enemies and through the hell and through the darkness. Mm -hmm. Or I can say, oh no, man, I can't eat that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to swallow that. That's, that's not for me. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Getting quiet in here. <laughs> it's good. Hallelujah. Go with me to Psalm 27. Jesus. Psalm 27. You know, I was thinking the other day, because my mind never leaves this. I live, eat, and sleep it. We talk it all the time. We talk it waking up, and we talk to it about it going to bed, and... We, we are consumed with this, this concept of actually being able to live in such a place. Yes. Yes. And I got thinking, I was studying yesterday, the day before, and I got thinking, isn't this actually what my whole life and existence has yearned for? Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't this what it's been about yeah. all along? Yeah. Mm -hmm. to, to Abide in His presence. Yes. Hasn't that been? Hasn't yes. this been the drawing from yes. the very beginning? Yes. Yes. That I, I that I, I long for Him. Yeah. That I yearn to to live in this this place. This is what it was all about. Yes. And it's like I was thanking the Lord. Thank you for clearing away my eyes yes. and and restoring that hope and that vision yeah. that I once had. Yes. That this is actually where you're leading us to. Yes. You are bringing us to Zion. Yes. This Zion thing is just, mm. it's phenomenal. We talk about the 144,000, we really don't know who they are. Mm. Mm -mm. Who are these people? Mm. They're the, uh, gathered together in the presence of the Lamb, singing a song. Yeah. Yeah. Who are these people that have come to Zion? Mm -hmm. Have come to the Paul said to the Hebrews, he said, You haven't come to Mount Sinai that burns with fire or with trumpets and, and the law. He said, That's not what you've come to. He said, You have come to Zion. Mm -hmm. 
This is where God is drawing us to. His presence. God said, I want to live in Zion. Yeah. I have chosen Zion yeah. for my habitation. Yeah. This was God's choice. Yeah. Not David's. Yes. Where did Zion come from anyway? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Before David, there was no mention of Zion. Wow. There's nothing in history about Zion. There was no place anywhere else on the, in the world that was called Zion. It was not part of anybody's vocabulary. It wasn't in any books or previous writings. It wasn't in the Torah. David captures the city of Jerusalem from the Jebusites. Right. And he calls it Zion. Zion. Where did he get that from? He got it from God. Why? Because it was to be a... <laughs> it, was, it was to be a reflection of the heavenly Mount Zion that already was yeah. and has always been. What do you suppose Lucifer was up to mm. on the mountain of God? Wow. 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 He went up the mountain of God. He said, that's what I want. Mm. I want that mountain. Wow. And I want those that inhabit that mountain. Wow. Uh, no wonder you, he will war you against you, yeah. fight against you, yeah. and push and shove against you yeah. when your destination is the yeah. oh. Somebody oh. praise the Lord. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. This was his whole aim and goal because God was enthroned mm. in Zion. Hallelujah. Wow. It's so powerful when you start to see the picture come together. Yes. Mm. The, the, these people, these are the ones who have a hunger and a desire and a longing, not for a religion. Come on. Mm. Not for a doctrine. Not for a church. Yes. Mm. But for a presence. Right. Mm. Wow. They long for a presence. Yes. They, you have not come to Mount Sinai. Says, that's over there with the tabernacle. Mm. We've moved to a new place, basically, he was telling them. You've mm. come to a new dispensation. He said, no, you have come to Zion. Mm. Mm. You've come to a place where God wants to bring his presence and cause it to abide on you. This is the very thing that is promised us in Amos 9.11, which was repeated by James in Acts chapter 15, that in the last days, God would raise up and restore again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. Mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. And here we are. Here we are in the middle of God constructing. Yes. God building. God raising up the ruins again thereof. Yes. God causing his people to wake up yes. and set their eyes on Zion yes. and set their eyes yes. on veneration yes. and love and worship yes. to the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. I got an email from a brother a few days ago, also the other side of the world, and he said, I just got through listening to Tabernacle lesson number four. And he said, all of my life, I've been looking for the presence of God in the wrong places while I'm committing my sin. Mm. Wow. Mm. But you can't live that way yeah. and commit your sin yes. and remain under that presence. Yeah. Mm. You agitate that presence yeah. just slightly and that presence will leave you. Yeah. And you will be excluded Ooh. from walking on that mountain. Mm. Oh. God wants to deal with sin in his people. He wants to deal with our corruptions, yes. with our pride, with our disease. Yes. Yes. The way we think and perceive things. God wants to deal with us. Yes. Mm. Praise God and set us free yes. so that we can live cautiously before God. Circum circumspectly. Yes. Hallelujah. Cautiously. Walk cautiously knowing every step I make Every move I make, mm. every decision I make, every choice I make, I do not want to agitate mm. the tough. Mm. 
Mm. Hallelujah. I don't want to agitate or lose the presence of God. Hallelujah. Woo, man. Mm. My, my whole being is on fire. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, it's exciting? Yes. <laughs> It's like a drink of cold water on a hot day. Woo! Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus. How do we do this? Mm. How do we get to this place? Mm. The different things and we, we can study and we will, no doubt. Mm. But it all begins with one thing. One word. Seek. It all begins with seeking. Now you know what you are seeking because what you are seeking for in life is what your mind is consumed yes, with. That's good. Mm. Whatever you are consumed with, that's what you're seeking. Whatever your mind is occupied with, when you wake up in the morning and go to bed at night and throughout the day, that's what your soul is seeking. Wow. Mm. And this is why David was like, his whole being was consumed mm. in seeking God and seeking after the Lord. I would love to know, not that I will ever know, neither will you, God will never show us such a thing, but I would love to know, just statistically, how many of God's people, the, the billions of them that are so-called Christians yeah. in the world today, how many of them seek the presence of God? We seek the hand of God, the power of God, the healing of God, answers from God, direction from God. But how many put their minds to seek His presence? I don't think there would be very many. I, I really don't believe that. I'm not trying to be judgmental or look down my nose at anybody because I've got a long way to go myself. But looking around in the religious world, what's out there, what I hear, what I see, what I read, it's like, wow. Is this the best that God's people can come up with? Seven steps to riches and ten <laughs> steps to success. And mm -hmm. you go to churches these days and you hear a motivational speech mm -hmm. of how to be successful, how to be loved, and how to have a good marriage, and how to have a good home. It's not that these things are not important. important. Keep them in a seminar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep them out there in a classroom. Right. Keep a Sunday to get your people convicted about their yeah. sin. Right. Yes. Yes. So people can be aware. Yes. I need to walk a little bit more cautiously so I can keep the dove. Yes. Wow. Hallelujah. Mm. Woo! Ah! Yes. Yes. In Psalm 27, verse 8, mm. in verse 4, I just mm. love this verse. Yes. Yes. And let's read down. I'll read. You follow. I read it the other day. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Mm. To behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in His temple. For in the time of trouble, He shall hide me in His pavilion. In the secret of His tabernacle shall He hide me. He shall set me up on a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices, not of bullocks and rams and goats, mm. because they didn't have that in David's tabernacle, but sacrifices of joy. Mm. I will sing, yea, mm. I will sing praises. Woo! Yes. Unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Mm. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. And then now listen to this. When you said, Seek ye my face, ponim, presence, mm. 
-hmm. bread, mm -hmm. purpose, mm -hmm. yeah. reason, countenance. Mm -hmm. When you said, seek my face, my heart mm. responded. Ah! <laughs> my heart responded. Yeah. Yeah. When you told me, David, seek my face. Mm -hmm. David said, my heart said Woo! unto thee, thy face, Lord will I seek. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. When thou said, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Mm -hmm. Now, the word seek, yeah. this word seek means to, listen, Brandon, you're going to love this. This word seek, when the Lord said, seek my face, my upon me, my countenance, my purpose, my reason, my presence, my bread, it means to search out specifically in worship. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. To search out specifically in worship mm. and prayer. Wow. That's powerful. Yes. Mm. To seek for Him in worship and in prayer. It means to strive mm. after. Mm. You know what the problem with most people people's religion is today mm. there is no war in their religion Come on. Right. Wow. there is no striving yes. yeah. there is no fight right. yeah. there is no get up and go right. there's no drive there is no pressing on yeah. people have become so weak and lesser and and slap happy and lukewarm yeah. and apathetic yeah. This is exactly the Laodicean yes, church age yes, that we are promised yes, would be yes, at the end of time. Yes, and yet yes. God's people know about that and cannot look in the mirror and say, oops, that's me. And you cannot show anyone. It's got to be a revelation. Only God can wake you up. I can't wake you up. I can't even wake myself up. Right. Only God can cause us to wake up. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It means to strive after. To ask for. When is the last time you asked and said, God, give me your presence. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, be careful now when you ask that. Mm. Because right around the corner, he'll lead you to a table. Mm. Surrounded with enemies. Mm. And he will stop breaking that bread in the midst of your enemies. He sure will. Praise God. Jesus. And then you'll have to decide then whether you take the bread or not. Mm. Mm. And make a habitation for the presence he's giving you. Purpose, reason, countenance, face, bread. Mm. No wonder his presence is considered his face, his eyes, his sight, his smell, his mouth, his speech, his ears that are all in his head. Hallelujah. His presence sees and smells and speaks and listens. Praise the name of Jesus. Am I making sense? Yes. yes. Glory be to the name of the Lord. It means to beg for. God, I want it. I've been begging these last few months. I want it. This is what I want. No wonder God's led us to so many tables within us. <laughs> 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 God, I want it. I want, I want your presence. I want the bread. I want your face. Yes. I want your countenance in my space. Yes. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It means to desire. One thing have I desired of the Lord. To inquire and to make request. Glory to God. Only God can birth that in you. And I'm hoping, I'm praying, I'm believing that through these lessons, someone, hopefully all of us, will have a birth of this yearning. Yeah. This longing, this, this craving for God. God's not asking you to be a Mr. Perfect. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. If you walk out that door, oh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to watch that door. <laughs> You'd be impossible to live around. <laughs> One of those person like, oh, I'm above you all. I'm looking out for the door. <laughs> you know, and even in your worship, you're like, oh, oh. watch the door. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna build a nest for 
Next time you come to church, you'll be wearing a dove on your shoulder. <laughs> so I'm making a demonstration of a dove. I'm not. I'm not talking about that. I'm not. I'm not talking about people being so high-minded in themselves that they're not good enough to walk on the earth. Be real. Be real with yourself. And be real with God. God will show you what He requires of you. God will lead you into what He wants from you with His presence. God will show you what pleases Him or what agitates His presence. God will show you what causes that presence to flee. God's presence is sensitive. It flees away with the slightest agitation. This is why you can be in a service and go make one wrong move. Mm. As a worship leader or a pastor or a leader, make one wrong move yeah. and he's gone. Yes. Yeah. We've all experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same way. But it's about seeking. A perpetual seeking. Hunger. Yeah. A desire. Mm. God, this is what I want. Mm. So you slip and you fall. Stand up, yes. shake off the yes. dust, Amen. and move on. Yes. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Let me give you one more scripture. Can I do that? Yes. yes. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> Exodus 33. Jesus. Beginning in verse 13. This is after the renewal of the covenant with Moses and children of Israel, etc. Now therefore, I'm in verse 13, 33, Exodus. <clears throat> therefore I pray thee, this is Moses talking to God, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me thy way. Mm -hmm. ah. That's the word way, that's Jesus, I am the way. Derek. Show me the way, it means a well-trodden path. Mm -hmm. It's well trodden because he has gone before me. Mm -hmm. Show me thy way that I may know thee. This was the desire of Moses. Show me the way so that I can know you. Not so I can be a great leader. Yeah. Not so I can have great power and position. Mm -hmm. Not so I can be somebody in history. Uh, show me a way that I can know who you are. Yeah. That I might find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. Mm -hmm. And in verse 14, this is how the Lord responded to Moses for him seeking to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. He asked to show him his way so that he could know him. Mm -hmm. God's response to him was, mm -hmm. my presence. Mm -hmm shall go with thee, and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Mm -hmm. In other words, if your presence is not there, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. If your presence is not moving, I am not moving. How am I going to know who you are? By my presence. Mm -hmm. My presence will show you who I am. Oh, but not on that, I'm not finished. The best is yet to come. Wow. Ooh. Verse 16. For wherein shall it be no uh, for women? Yes. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. How is it going to be known that we are your people? How is it going to be known that we have found grace? How is it going to be known that your presence is with us? How is everybody of the nations of the world going to know this? Mm. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says. Is it not that thou goest with us? This is how they know. My presence is with you. So shall we be separated. Mm. Hello. Yeah. It means, that word separated is a really cool word. It means 
distinguished. Mm. So shall we be distinguished. It means to put a difference in between. Mm. So there shall be put a difference in between who we are called to be and who the world is called to be. Yeah. When your presence is with us, glory be to God, there will be a separation. There will be a separation from the world and where I'm walking under your presence. Yes. Yes. When I'm walking under your presence, there's going to be a separation. Yes. Why? Because I'm not going to agitate the dust. Right. Mm. Right. That's why. I'm going to be cautious. Oh. I'm going to be cautious with the dove. Yeah. Cautious with the abiding Shekinah, Shakan, dwelling, remaining, presence, dwelling, presence of God. Thank you, Lord. This was one of the distinguishing factors of the presence of God and the fact that these, this nation were God's people. Powerful. That they were distinguishable. Mm. That there was a difference put between. It means to be set apart. Yes. It means to be severed or oh. cut. It, yes. it means to be wonderfully made. Mm. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Wonderfully made. God is still calling us yes. Yes. to be a separated people. Mm. God's still calling us to be one with Him. Uh, in his presence in the place with separation. Mm -hmm. This is God's purpose. He's never changed it. Mm -hmm. right. The world changes. Right. Everybody in it changes. The church changes. People get different ideas. They change. Yeah. But God never changes. And yet you, I, I read it. I get so mad sometimes. <laughs> you know, they're, they're pumping stuff out there in the religious world. Like well, We are in the 21st century, you know. So you got to understand that if the Bible were written today, yeah. then this is what it would say. So they reinvent the Word of God. They rewrite it to fit the 21st century as if God is so stupid. Yeah. He didn't know there was going to be a 21st century. <laughs> That's good. Like he didn't know that he was talking to all centuries that were to come yeah. Yeah. when he moved it, yeah. when he moved by his spirit yeah. through his holy the holy men of God that wrote the word of God yeah. as if God did not know that someone in 2016 would be reading the word of God and seeing the word separate and eh, no that's for 2000 years ago mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Now when I say separated, I'm not talking about looking right and acting like, you know, like putting on a uniform mm. and, and looking like everybody else and dressing certain. I'm not talking about that. Right. Mm. I'm talking about being separated yes. unto God in Him. Yes. Yes. You are 24-7 yes. conscious. Yes. You are consciously aware yes. of God's presence, yes. of God's requirements, yes. of what God wants. And for you it may be one thing and for me it may be another. That's true. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as a uniform yes. in living for God. It doesn't exist. But there is a requirement. Right. Mm -hmm. God has requirements. Yeah. Thank you Lord. There are certain requirements, plain and simple, clear, laid out, God requires. Yeah. There are other requirements God will convict your own heart about. Yes. Right. And just because he convicts you doesn't mean you gotta go try and convict somebody else. That's right. yeah. that's because right. that's their walk that's with right. God. That's right. Hallelujah. If you're living in your clear conscience with God wherever you are, and you're not agitating that dove, right. praise God, then I say you're walking exactly where you should be. That's right. If that dove is still resting on your shoulder and you're walking with his presence in your daily life, woo! Glory be to God, I say, let me join you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Watch out for people. Do I dare say this? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Watch 
watch out for people who when you are with them one day, you feel that presence, and the next day you don't. Watch out for those people. Mark. Mark those. They are they're aggravating, agitating the presence of God. Mm. Mm. Something is going on in their world mm. that is causing the spirit to flee. Mm. Next time you meet them, they may have it back again. And the next time you meet them, it's gone. It's like you never know what you're going to face. Mm. You never know what you're going to walk into, love or hate, acceptance or opposition. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever Jesus walked, mm. they flocked. Yes. There was something about that man. Mm. When he started his ministry, and he, he went into the synagogue, mm. as was his custom. Mm. He'd done it growing up. And he went into the synagogue. He was about to start. He was 30 years old, about to start his ministry. And they handed him. He didn't ask for it. Mm. He didn't start it off. God did. Mm. They handed him the book of Isaiah. And he opened the scroll to Isaiah 66. And he looks around. Can you get this picture? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he reads, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Mm -hmm. His presence is upon me. Mm -hmm. It is here. It is remaining. It is abiding. Because he has uh, called me to, how does it go, heal the broken heart and set the captive free and open the prison door. He, he reads these words and everybody in the synagogue is like, yeah. <laughs> they, they don't get what they're feeling. Right. And he, he rolls back the scroll again, hands it back to the scribe and sits back down there. And they're all like, did you all feel that? <laughs> Did you all feel the anointing mm -hmm. and the power, the presence that was in his words? Mm -hmm. And he was reading a, a portion of Isaiah we have read a thousand times. Mm -hmm. But today, mm -hmm. it was applicable. Mm -hmm. Today, it came alive. Mm -hmm. Today, the prophecy was fulfilled. Like it is with this thing of the restoration of David's tabernacle. I'm watching it being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Wow. Praise you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. This is my heartbeat. You want to know what my heartbeat is? This is my heartbeat. Amen. Mm -hmm. When I know what I want to do, this is what I want to do. When I know where I'm going in my service to the Lord, this is it. Jesus. Praise God. I want to learn to live without agitating God's presence. I want to learn to live a life uh, that will bring me to Zion, that will bring me to this place of dwelling in the presence of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, where He is my focus, He is my reason, He is my purpose. This is what ponim, presence, means. Mm. Reason and purpose. Bread, countenance, face. Mm. Hallelujah. That He's my bread, He's my life, He's my breath, and Him I live and move and have my being. Presence. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Oh. Glory to God. I have a terribly heavy burden with this. Um, this word, these lessons, uh, this is not just a sermon. I hope it doesn't come across as just another sermon. No. No. I don't want to preach another sermon. Amen. I don't even want to have another church service. I'm sick of church. I'm tired of playing with God. Yeah. I'm tired of, of, you know, going around the circle of trying to please people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Because it, when it's all over and done, who do you, who, who do you want to hear say, well done? Mm. Your brethren? They're not going to say it. 
Because there's going to be something you do that's going to offend someone. But I don't want to offend him. I don't want to agitate that presence out of my life. I want that presence so that all that I do is done through the presence. That everything that, you know, that I become a, a residence. The, the, the theme of what I'm teaching down there in, in, in Fayetteville, the theme of the, those three nights is, is residing God's presence. Uh, making yourself a resident. Yeah. A residence. He's the resident. Mm -hmm. I'm the residence. Mm -hmm. Making your life a house that he can come and rest upon. Mm -hmm. This is what they cried out. David, King David cried out to God when he made that temple, uh, the tabernacle. He cried out to the Lord and he said, God, come into your resting place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come into your resting place. This is where, this is what I've made for your presence to abide among your people. Hear the sound of the worship, of the adoration, of the love, of the reverence. There's no reverence anymore. For God, there's no reverence in His house. It's treated like it's a going into mire. It's like just walking in and out of a store. There's no more fear of God left in the nation. People don't care. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Presence of God, so what? I'm here to have a good time. I'm here to socialize. I'm here to see everybody. I'm here to get touched and tickled. Whatever else it may be, why people go. But very, very few people walk into the doors of a place that is separated mm -hmm. unto the name of the Lord yes. with the focus on their hearts and on their minds. I have come to seek Him. Mm -hmm. I've come to seek His presence. Yes. I've come to know His way. Yeah. That I may know you. That I may know who you are. Yeah. But that I may walk out of here with a greater portion of that dove on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many go and look for that? How many then walk out of there and go in the car and go home and, and they're still thinking about that? Lord, don't leave me. Yes. Take not your spirit from yes. me. Yes. Don't let me fall into that place where I lose you. Mm -hmm. No indwelling, he's not gonna, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He, his indwelling presence will remain. You gotta throw him out. If you don't, you got to reject Him for that indwelling presence to leave you. His only presence, naturally, you'll never get rid of that. His manifest presence will come to you spasmodically all the rest of your life, here and there and everywhere. And those things are great and wonderful, but it's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about the residing. Hmm. And the Spirit came and remained hmm. upon Him. But David, I want to be like that, seeking, beseeching, begging, crying out for, uh, uh, searching for through worship yes. and prayer. You know, how, how many of you have ever, I'm sorry for going over time. Oh no. But how many of you have ever been aware? I'm sure you have. I know you have. You've been aware in church or in your prayer closet or driving a car wherever it may be, where you kind of leave the realm of earth mm -hmm. and you're just not aware anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people standing around you, you're, you're not aware of the issues. Mm -hmm. You're not aware of the weather. You're, you're not aware of the woes. You're, you, you, you come into a realm of presence yes. in that kind of contact with God when nothing matters. Yes. That's, uh, that's the presence I'm talking about. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. the, this is where you say, can we live in that place? Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And he was human. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, glory. <God>. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he was tempted in all points like we, yes. without sin, never agitated, never lost. Mm -hmm. The 
that abide in prison. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Brandon, pick up your guitar. Mm -hmm. yes. Lead us in the song. I, I need to go. I need to pray. Yes. Yes. Just for a few moments, I need yes. to pray. Maybe you can all join me. And you know, if you feel that anointing and spirit I'm feeling, mm -hmm. ask God, my cry for you all tonight is that this, this scream be birthed in your heart. This longing, this desire for Him to be birthed in your heart. Every one of us need it. I need it. You need it. Just find a place before God. You can lay on the floor, go back over there, sit, stand, kneel. I don't care what you do. Praise God. While Brendan plays and sings a song, just cry out to God.